Hi, I'm Caroline. And I'm Adrian. And this is Scandal Sheets. to Scandal Sheets, the podcast that explores the scandals of history along with the people and places associated with it. I'm your host, Caroline. And I'm Adrian. And holy cow, we are actually recording for the first time in a while. March. March? Seriously? I'm pretty sure, because I was looking at the feed the other day and I, and I was thinking about how we were letting our followers down. <laughs> I know. Yes, thank you for all you guys who have uh, chimed in and have asked, you know, when are you guys coming back? And that makes me feel so good. Yeah, that's so sweet. The good news is that I am two weeks away from being done with school for awesome. the quarter. And that means three glorious months of doing nothing. Besides but podcasting. And podcasting, yeah. <laughs> so we should definitely have some more episodes coming your way. This is going to be part one, we believe, of a of two episodes, yes, on Tallulah Bankhead, who is a... Was. Was rather crazy. infamous <laughs> actress that has kind of gone out of fashion, or people just don't really know who she is, and she definitely was... Uh, she was a badass. She was a character. So, we are doing that, and I think part two may be two weeks out as Adrian is leaving me Probably. to go abroad again. Yep. Yeah. So, when she gets back, we will have part two ready for you. So. Mm-hmm. But other than that, let's get started. Yeah? Okay. So, Tallulah Bankhead was born in 1903 in Huntsville, Alabama. She was born into a very political family. Her grandfather was a U.S. senator, and later on her father would become Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. So, Southern royalty, she was raised to know that, so it's very interesting that she ended up the way that she ended up. Yeah. Basically a big middle finger to her upbringing. Yeah, did not watch her mouth. (laughs) No, she did not. So, we're going to actually let Adrienne start out things because she's going to talk about the building that Tallulah was born in, which, as you just said, you learned pretty much everything you ever would want to know about Huntsville. Yeah, there's a National Register nomination from 1980 that didn't have a ton about this specific building, but I appreciated that in 1980, there were several women who documented basically whatever was left after urban renewal. So they kind of went through like the whole grid of Huntsville and identified the significant structure. So this, so this building is on the register. Tallulah Bankhead was born on the second floor of the Isaac Schiffman building right downtown 231 East side square. So it was on the historic courthouse square is on the historic courthouse square. It still is exists. Thanks to the Huntsville City website for a location map and small blurb about the building, but mostly to the Huntsville History Collection website for an article written by the current steward of the building, president of I. Schiffman and Company since 1995. And so Isaac Schiffman, the man who purchased the building in 1905, was her great, great uncle. So she the great great niece? Like how, what what is right. it the other way around? Well, there, anyway, she, yes, great they're niece. they're related and the building is still held in the family obviously by her. So they've been stewards of the of the building since the turn of the 20th century. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You don't see that very often. No, not at all. I was very impressed. Uh so like I said Tallulah was born on the second floor. The building was built around 1845, and before that current building, the Schiffman Building, there was another building constructed around 1817 with the address of numbers 1 and 2 Cheapside. And I just love that street name, which is really the only reason I brought it up, because obviously it was demolished for the building that's there now. 
Cheapside. Cheapside, which was a neighborhood in London. Oh, really? Yes. You see it pop up in Jane Austen novels. Oh, that's so funny. Quite frequently. During urban renewal in the 1960s, late 1960s, the northern two bays were demolished. So this, the building that's still there, the Isaac Schiffman building, is a third of the size of what it was there originally. Oh, wow. So what's there is just like the corner slice. There were two other parts to it that are no longer extant. The building was originally constructed in a federal style, but I'm guessing it's more classical because federalism obviously predates eight, the 1840s. The building is no longer of that style, well, rather the courthouse facing elevation since it's on the corner. The facade was transformed into Richardsonian Romanesque style by Nashville architect George Thompson after Southern Savings and Loan purchased it in 1895. The building's namesake, Isaac Schiffman, was the first owner after the facelift. He bought it in 1905, and as I mentioned, it remains in his family. The building was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. The Huntsville History Collection says that this is one of the few surviving commercial examples of Richardsonian Romanesque architecture in Alabama. The stylistic transformation included both interior and exterior changes. Outside, the facade was clad in rough-cut limestone, archways cut over the front door and first-floor window, and first-floor three uh, tripartite window, that is. The others remain, um, they just have a square lintel. And so apparently it, her father had an office on the first floor when he was yeah. the city attorney? And that she was born on the second yeah. floor? And then yeah, right the there. plan, right, and the plan was reconfigured for offices on all three floors. That would have been after she was born. Okay. Yeah, because it was after 1905 and she was born in 1902 or three. Yeah, okay, I see that. Okay. You have to identify Romanesque versus Richardsonian Romanesque. So when we say Romanesque, we're talking about specifically, it's it's earlier, it's a Victorian style from the 1840s and 50s, like the castle at the Smithsonian. And Richardsonian Romanesque is later in the 19th century because it's named after Henry Hobson Richardson. So Romanesque architecture is known for the following identifying features. Round arches, Roman, this is a Roman arch, so it's a true, like it's not just a curve, like, a, an, uh, like an arc, it's actually an arch. Over Round arches over windows and or entryways with heavy decorational emphasis around those arches, like a column or some sort of coin-like feature, like a cut stone. Thick cavernous entryways and window openings, thick masonry walls, rounded or sometimes square towers with a conical roof, typically asymmetrical facades, and variable stone and brick material. The style emphasizes the classical Roman arch as its dominant feature. Since the Schiffman building was updated in the style rather than built ground up, creating the courthouse facing elevation in the newer American style of Richardsonian Romanesque was a much less expensive alternative than tearing down the existing building and starting over. So because of all that stone and the detailing and sort of the craftsmanship in involved, it was very expensive to build a, a true Richardsonian Romanesque structure. Richardsonian Romanesque originated in the 1870s by architect Henry Hobson Richardson, who studied at the École des Beaux-Arts in Paris in the 1860s. The style is his interpretation of the earlier architectural style of Romanesque revival. Just as the practitioners of Beaux-Arts classicism creatively interpret ancient architectural styles, Richardson applied his own aesthetic to the Romanesque. So when you think of a, a Beaux-Arts building, it has orders, but they're not, you know, specifically adhered to... Um, the Doric, Ionic, Corinthian, you could kind of mix things up and change things. And that's sort of what it was with Henry Hobson Richardson and the Romanesque. Like he sort of took what he liked from it and updated it. So the this style exhibited 
Henry Hobson Richardson's individualism through unusual sculpted shapes and massive use of heavy, heavy masonry walls, usually rough face squared stone. Decorative wall patterns were achieved use, utilizing colors or textures of stone. A typical Richardsonian Romanesque characteristic includes rounded arches over porch supports, entryways, or windows. Most of these arches were set on squat columns or massive piers or sometimes built directly into the wall. Arches were enhanced by masonry voussoirs, and voussoirs are a wedge-shaped cut stone that you would see as, as part of the lintel. So it's not like a just a rectangle. It'd be, I guess, a trapezoid. And one of uh, Henry Hobson Richardson's most famous and influential works is the Trinity Church on Copley Square in Boston. So you can look at that to see how he interpreted that style, the Romanesque style, into his liking for a new architectural aesthetic later in the 19th century. It clearly caught on since it became Richardsonian Romanesque. Yeah, I know, right? I think that's interesting because you don't say like Wrightian or Kanian or Sullivan. <laughs> Well, I guess there is Sullivan-esque, but yeah, but yeah. saying like actually ha- taking a style and then adding a person's name, an architect's name, <laughs> he did pretty good for himself. So the Schiffman f- building features almost all of these characteristics, including rounded arches, rough stone, asymmetrical facade, and sculpted shapes at the cornice. It successfully anchors the corner and conveys permanence. It's very fortunate that the family has taken such great care of the building, including maintaining records and advocating for proper restoration and preservation. That is to say, restoring the building to the Secretary of Interior standards in 1997 and preserving the historic fabric ever since. Buildings in the rest of downtown Huntsville of similar age were not so lucky. The Greek Revival Courthouse Complex, right across the street, that had served the city since the 1840s, was demolished and replaced with a modernist glass, steel, and concrete federal building in 1967 that threw off the scale of the historic courthouse square very significantly. Is it there now? Oh, yeah. It is still there. And it's sort of two parts. There's a skyscraper that's very dark and sort of Vader-esque. That's, I think, seven or so stories. And then like a lot of the public works, you sort of you have to go up before you get in the building. So it's not even at street level. I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking um, at it right now. Yeah, and wow. and then there's a lower part, like a lower one story part that's mostly sort of concrete. It's it's not a horrible modern building. I think it's just inappropriately placed. Yeah. Was, um, and it's yeah. sad that, you know, the old courthouse from the eighteen forties was this sort of cruciform Greek revival temple front deal with the pediment. Not unlike the Raleigh, like the North Carolina State Capitol in Raleigh. Okay. Which is really beautifully done. And I, I did not look up the architect, but it was the, you know, traditional sort of civic square of a, of a medium sized well to do city with regardless of geography, you know, you have courthouse in public square with sort of park around it. And when the urban renewal came through, they got rid of that and really removed a relationship to the street and public park. It's, it's not, I don't think it's that welcoming. There's no walls. It's just very stark. But, concrete steps and and urban I don't know. renewal was not really known for forethought so <laughs> no so, so much yeah. stuff got lost during that period very much so i do want to add that I, I mentioned that my information about some specific information about the i Schiffman building was from the huntsville history collection and the specific article was written by margaret ann goldsmith who like i mentioned Isaac Schiffman was her great, great uncle. So it was Isaac died in 1910. His son, Robert, her great uncle, became president of I. Schiffman and Company. Robert died in 1936. Then her grandfather, Lawrence Goldsmith Sr., took over until 1972. And then her father, Lawrence Goldsmith Jr., became president and he died in 95. And she became president of the company and steward of the building. Wow. So it, it is... Yeah, it's it's that family. And I mean, and the building's beautiful. So cool. Good for them for sticking around and preserving their their beautiful historic building. And now for something not so scandalous. Stay tuned for more scandal sheets after the break. And now back to the show. 
So Tallulah was born in this this building. Unfortunately, three weeks after her birth, her mother died of blood poisoning. What does that 